Hey ho, it's uh, Marco Catanio representing Charles Sturt University with yet another study aid for the subject ITI 597 and the subject that covers IT service management. Hey, in today's topic, um, I'm going to cover some basic concepts for the process capacity management. So, some basic concepts for the process capacity management. Yeah, capacity, capacity, capacity. Let's ask some questions, such as like, are all your software licenses like optimally used? Are all your hardware resources like optimally used? We're talking like hard disk space, memory, CPUs, uh, accommodation, data center space. Are resources properly arranged for like new or roaming users? So if new users join your organization, eh, are desktops already in place for them? Are like licenses already installed for them? Is the computer room properly sized and supplied with enough power? What about backups and batch jobs? Do they properly finish on time? And are applications like responding fast enough? So we're talking resources here. We're talking like hardware, software and like network resources. And we're also talking about performance here. Okay, capacity, capacity, capacity. Hey, you may have seen this slide before, but it's it's so important that I'm going to show it. Uh, I'm going to show it again, and, and probably like again and again and again until you get it. Key message: If you don't measure it, so if you don't measure your capacity, then you can't manage it. If you don't measure your capacity, then you can't improve it. If you don't measure your capacity, well, you probably don't care about resources, and you probably don't care about your performance. In other words, if you can't influence or control it, well, sorry, then don't measure it. So this is all about measuring, okay? We need to measure in order to, like, move on. Yeah, capacity management is really a balancing act. And here you're juggling with costs and you're juggling with resources and you're trying to find your balance here. There's this guy called Henry Moore, one of, the, one of the founders of Intel, and he said back in 1965 that the number of transistors you can put on a, on a given space had roughly doubles every 18 months. And, and producing these like integrated circuits is also getting like cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. So the longer you can wait, the more bang for your buck you will get. So, but of course, if you wait too long, then it will start to impact on the productivity of your organization. So it's all about like finding the right time eh, and then buy the right resources and of course like planning ahead as well. So it's definitely a balancing act. And here we're balancing, we're juggling with the costs and we're juggling with the resources. Yeah, a balancing act indeed. And here we've got this balance we need to find between demands from our customers and, and we are of course like supplying the resources and the services to those customers. So we need to find balance again. Now there's this, there's this law from, called Parkinson's law. And, and Parkinson's law roughly tells you that like, if you, if you give your customers resources, they will find ways to consume the available resources they are supplied with. So you can, you can start to like increase hard disk space until the cows come home, your customers will find new ways to use the hard disk space. So in other words, you need to manage the demands and you need to do manage the supplies because if you don't manage it then the customer will always want more 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 because they will find ways to use it so you need to manage demands and supplies that's also part of capacity management now although capacity management talks about quite a number of activities in, in reality in a nutshell you can actually look at Deming's uh, Deming's model plan do check act we need to plan for capacity, we need to plan for like the right number of resources and the right level of performance. We need to implement and create an infrastructure that delivers against the requirements, of course like in a cost effective way. We need to monitor and check whether or not we're delivering against those performance requirements. And if not, of course we need to take action. So in reality, in a nutshell, capacity management is also based upon like Deming's model. So Deming rules, and Deming was here. Yeah, some activities and outputs for the process capacity management. Uh, activities, reviewing current capacity and performance. Are we delivering against requirements, yes or no? Improving current service and component capacity. 
If it ain't broken, we can still make it better if it's going to be cost effective. Assess, agree and document new requirements and capacity. Uh, we want to make sure uh, we can actually deliver something uh, we are able to, so we don't like end up like over-promising or like under-promising. And of course we need to plan for new capacity, we need to plan for new resources, we need to plan for like performance changes. We can't just like make like last minute decisions, that's not going to work properly. Outputs, um, capacity and performance reports, capacity and performance data, so we actually know how well you're doing. Um, forecasts, so predicting uh, when, for example, you will need new resources, predicting when certain thresholds will be met. And the capacity plan, it brings it all together, all these initiatives for like, for example, uh, uh, all the changes that will need to be made, uh, all the new requirements from customers, and, and for example, like all the improvements you want to make, the capacity plan brings it all together. You, Musky, uh, practice what you preach. Yeah, of course it's about understanding the basic concepts of capacity management. Hey, what type of performance and what type of resources should be supplied at your, who knows, wedding party? So, services, entertainment, components, uh, we need like one piano, uh, one drum set, one guitar and two singers. Catering, we need like 48 bottles of wine and 300 sausages. Transport, uh, six taxis and 48 parking spots. Security, we need 12 lockers and 3 uh, fit bouncers. And hygiene services, we need a freezer um, with the capability to freeze between like minus 7 and minus 15 degrees Celsius. So it's really about numbers and, and performance. So for example, like the temperature range. So think about some more services and, and think about some more components and have fun. Yeah, simple question. Hey, which one of the following statements seems incorrect uh, considering the process capacity management? Answer A. According to Moore's law, IT is getting cheaper and faster roughly every 18 months. Answer B. According to Parkinson's law, users will find ways to consume the resources supplied to them. Answer C. Capacity management manages items like resources, performance, utilization and transaction times? And answer D. Capacity management makes services available when the users require them. I'll give you a couple of uh, seconds to think about the answer and then as usual we move on. Yeah, of course the answer is answer Answer D, making services available when users need them, well that's availability management, okay? That is not capacity management. Making things available is like availability management. In the next topic, in the next topic we're going to define and explain the capacity plan. Again, we're still in service design. Hey, until then, live long and prosper. Nano, nano. And as always, I'll be back.